Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the major news developments from across the globe. Our headlines. Moroccan teachers and staff unions prevent government assistance to profiteering private schools. Myanmar military admits to abuse of prisoners by soldiers. This is after a backlash over a leaked viral video. Protests erupt in Kashmir over the shooting of a civilian by paramilitary officers. Mike Pompeo visits Israel, assures US support for annexation of Palestinian territories. And US threatens reimposition of sanctions on Iran over opposition to proposed arms embargo extension. We begin with a short update on the COVID-19 pandemic. Close to 4.45 million infections have been reported around the world so far. The number of deaths has come to 298,000 with close to 2.5 million active cases. In Morocco, education sector unions have successfully prevented private for-profit schools from appropriating government aid as assistance. The Education International said in a statement yesterday that a federation of for-profit schools who continue to collect fee from the parents despite closing down will no longer receive any financial assistance from the government. The statement also added that these neither conducted classes nor paid teachers their salaries. Several teachers were in fact laid off. The for-profit schools also demanded exemption from paying salaries for their workers if parents refused to pay fees and also sought exception from certain taxes and contributions to the National Social Security Fund. Teachers and staff unions affiliated to the Education International strongly opposed the aggressive lobbying of for-profit schools. Accusing the private schools of profiteering from the pandemic, the unions demanded action from Prime Minister Saad Eddin al -Othmani. They also successfully raised this issue in the recent parliament session, the strategic alliances with the MPs. As a result of the extensive mobilization by the unions, the Moroccan government rejected all requests from the for-profit schools federation. The Labour Minister also announced the intention to prosecute schools who laid off teachers even as they collected fees from parents. Unions have called upon the government to stop proactive support for for-profit schools and focus on strengthening public schools. The unions also led a campaign for workers to donate a fraction of their wages to the National COVID-19 Solidarity Fund. In a rare admission of its wrongdoings, the Myanmar's military leadership was forced to admit to the veracity of a recent viral video of soldiers abusing prisoners inside a Navy vessel. Since Sunday, a video has been circulated exposing plain-clothed soldiers in the Rakhine state, brutally beating handicapped prisoners. The military stated that it apprehended those involved in the abuse of prisoners and assured that action would be taken against them. The prisoners who were abused in the video were arrested on April 22nd over charges of being members of the banned Arkan army, according to security force. Meanwhile, the family members of the accused persons have denied their association with the banned military group. Locals as well as the relatives of the detainees state that three of the detainees were apprehended days after security forces shelled a village on April 13th. The attack reportedly killed eight civilians and injured dozens of others. In our In Focus section, we bring you the situation of COVID-19 relief work or the absence of it in the territory of Puerto Rico.
Now, next story, protests have swept across central Kashmir against security forces after the killing of a 25-year-old civilian on May 13th for allegedly jumping an army checkpoint. Security forces responded to the protests by firing tear, canisters, tear gas canisters and pellet guns, injuring several people. Clashes and incidents of stone pelting were also reported at some places. The civilian, identified as Mehrajuddin Peer, was reportedly apprehended by members of the paramilitary stationed at Kavusa Khalisa village. Eyewitnesses to the incident, along with Peer's family members, rejected the police claim and accused the state forces of cold-blooded murder. According to G.H. Shah, who was travelling in the car along with Peer when the incident took place, a paramilitary officer of the CRPF fired at the car when they stopped for inspection at the checkpoint. The CRPF of the paramilitary forces in its statement claimed that a disease jumped two checkpoints before he was gunned down. The station personnel also feared sabotage as a military convoy was passing by at the time. However, Shah testified pointing out that the bullets hit the car from the front and not the back which would have been the case were they fleeing. US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo expressed the country's support for Israel's plan to annex illegal Jewish settlements in the occupied Palestinian territory. On his visit to Israel on May 13, the US Secretary of State openly supported plans to annex the strategically important Jordan Valley. The United States support for the annexation of Palestinian land comes days ahead of the commemoration of the Nakba. The Nakba commemorates the displacement of hundreds of thousands of Palestinians from their home during the formation of Israel in 1948. No pretense was made by Pompeo during his visit of neutrality. He did not meet any Palestinian leaders. In a statement to reporters, Pompeo said that the annexation move is totally up to the Israeli government and that the US is not going to interfere. Nonetheless, he added that the US administration hopes that the annexation will be in accordance with the Middle East peace plan proposed by President Donald Trump. Continuing with stories from the US, we bring you a feature from our friends at Breakthrough News on the racist nature of the police in America. This nature was especially brought to light following the murder of Ahmed Arbery in Georgia two months ago. Please do follow Breakthrough News, a US-based outlet which brings you the voice of people's movements across the country. And finally, the United States threatened to reimpose UN sanctions on Iran if its proposal to extend the arms embargo on the country is opposed to the UN Security Council. The plan to trigger a snapback of all UN, san UN sanctions was confirmed by US Special Representative for Iran, Brian Hook, in an opinion piece for the Wall Street Journal on May 13th. The arms embargo on Iran is due to expire by October this year as per the Iran nuclear deal. The administration of Donald Trump has drafted a UN Security Council resolution for the extension of this embargo under the deal despite having withdrawn from it. 
Hook wrote that the US plans to impose an arms embargo on Iran one way or another. The US would require 9 out of 15 votes in the UN Security Council and no veto from the permanent members to extend the embargo, although Russia is already opposing the proposal. The Iranian government hit back at Hook's comments, claiming that the Iran nuclear deal is not his business. According to the press, Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif said that matters concerning the Iran nuclear deal are between Iran and the signatories of the deal and not the US. The Trump administration withdrew from the Obama era deal in May 2018 and imposed unilateral sanctions on Iran. It has also threatened foreign firms in other countries, including signatories of the deal, with consequences if sanctions are not complied with. That's all we have in this episode of the International Daily Roundup. To know more about these stories, visit our website peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks for watching. Yeah,